the challenge and challenging the scales. The implications of scale for EBM. Uh, I'd like to welcome uh, Joanne Ellis up here. Jo is an associate professor at the University of Waikato and her research focuses on detecting and understanding the effects of human activities on marine ecosystems. She co-leads a project on communicating ecological risk and uncertainty and leads a project on understanding the impacts of mismatches in management and ecological scales. Ladies, gentlemen, and everyone in here, uh, let's give a big round of applause for Joanne. <clears throat> Uh, tēnā koutou kato, ko Joanne Tokuingua, he marine scientist, Ahauki Waikato University. Kia ora, everybody. It's my real pleasure to be here today talking to you about uh, scale and EBM. Um, I was going to be co-presenting with the wonderful Ani. Um, unfortunately, Ani has sick far now, so she cannot be here. Um, so please bear with me as I try to do justice to the important mahi that she has been doing within this project. So we all know that ecosystem-based management is a dynamic uh, process. It's focused on understanding and managing ecosystems across a range of organisational scales, which we've just heard about from the previous presentation, as well as spatial and temporal scales. But despite the importance of scale, only really is scale dependencies in different disciplines um, and the interactions between them explicitly brought to bear in terms of how it may impact the decision-making process um, or the success of that decision-making process. So this project, which, which is fairly recently uh, funded, aims to produce knowledge to better understand and communicate those scale dependencies for EBM. So we have three different research aims. Uh, our first research aim is a review of the existing knowledge um, that many of you from existing projects within the challenge, both phase one and phase two projects. So thank you very much. Many of you in this room completed a survey. Um, and this has helped us understand the scales that are of importance across many different um, worldviews and disciplines. So this research has now be com been completed and I will share just a few highlights of the findings from that work. The second research aim, um, we're in the early phases of the second research aim, looking at these scale dependencies, uh, cross analysis of these scale dependencies from a legal policy perspective, a mataranga Māori perspective, ecological and also psychological framing. Um, and then our third aim will come at the very end, so this again is work to be conducted, where we will draw upon the knowledge that we've generated from RA1 and RA2 to create our visual summaries. So some sneak peeks in terms of the survey results. Um, we reached out to you and we asked you what were the um, scales at which your projects were working at. And what we can see here is this um, diagram pulls together. You'll see all the different projects and the themes. And this is for phase two only, um, but you can go online and look at our reports of this. Um, that'll be released very shortly. So you can see ecological scales, the research tends to cluster at those larger spatial and temporal scales. We see local to national, years to decades type of scales. Um, participants for cultural scales identified that strong importance of local rohe moana, uh, and also the importance of intergenerational time scales. So that's a really key um, aspect that came through. And economic scales were clustered on those local spatial scales and scales over which businesses operate. But many of you, we asked you to also identify barriers and solutions with respect to scale. And many of you identified that the long intergenerational importance of tikanga is impeded by some of those short policy cycles. Yeah? So some really interesting and helpful um, korero that you shared with us and um, has helped inform a lot of our thinking around scale. So thank you for completing that survey. 
Um, so here you can see also some of your responses in terms of the scales at which tools operate. But what I want to um, just highlight and touch upon is some of the things that you shared with us around uh, where, how scale can either aid or hinder the best outcomes for our moana. Because um, that's really what we want. So in terms of um, the barriers, m mismatches in these jurisdictional boundaries um, were identified, which may be further complicated by institutional fragmentation and siloed agencies. That was just touched on. Um, obviously, a number of people, many, many people identified risk of inactions, so when we know that there is deterioration in the marine environment, but there are no interactions or impediments um, to uh, guardianship of marine spaces because of legislation. Solutions, many, many researchers highlighted that a better understanding of cumulative effects across scales that combines both worldviews, both knowledge systems, matauranga Māori, and the Western science is what we need to support EBM. And I think that's a central theme that we've seen come out across the conference. So thank you for sharing um, your, your thoughts and your experiences from across the projects. It's been very helpful. So we know that knowledge on scale can aid EBM in identifying these meaningful either temporal or spatial scales, for example, for restoration or other actions. Um, so here I want to um, present the work on, from Scales and Marine Māori Practices. Um, our wonderful MC the other day was sharing about the anemic looking shrimp that was dancing to the wrong music. I think it was, um, what was it, classical Mozart. So my apologies, you may feel that um, I am not dancing to the right music. I will do my best to reflect this important mahi of Ani and uh, Titike Aurora, who's sitting here in the audience. Thank you very much for your hard mahi on this. Um, so this section was led by our wonderful researchers, Ani and Tikiti Ora, using available literature and experiences of the marine environment according to Farnau, Hapu and Iwi. So scales is not a term that is explicitly used in te reo Māori. It is, however, inherent in Māori perspectives of the natural world and our relationships with that natural world. And we heard that yesterday in the korero that was shared with us. There are many examples um, of scales that have been shared and adopted by local and national management agencies and environmental researchers, and these include concepts of whakapapa, ki utu ki tai, hapu and iwi areas of authority. Um, examples of ki utu ki tai are given in these two images, which also represent whakapapa and mana whenua driven environmental uh, practices. So the key point um, that we would like you to take from this slide is the relationship in the ways that Māori practices interact at multiple levels. So multiple catchment approach from the, from the mountains to the sea, uh, very holistic approaches. You'll see there are no um, jurisdictional boundaries, species specific knowledge um, of those scales of movements, the connectivity of, of the environment at an ecosystem level. So ultimately these relationships are simultaneous across levels and scales, including temporal and spatial scales, and the key is interaction, not to be locked out from ancestral ecosystems. So benefits, um, the benefits of Māori marine practices I think are very clear um, and we saw many, many examples of the benefits. So at the core of these practices is tikanga, the protocols to do the right thing to maintain our balance with the natural world. Um, so there is not so much potential for practicing kita, uh, tikanga and restoring sustainable marine environments. So we think about matai tai reserves, legislated rahui, um, evidence of proactive efforts of whanau, hapu and iwi. However, le legislative um, rahui are not effectively including te kanga Māori and nor are they based on actual uh, life history information of species. Um, so some of these barriers around the legislation are, are brought to bear in this research. So um, the, the, the 
key point again is there's some issues around effective response that's not aligning with temporal and spatial and authoritative scales uh, that inshore fisheries management would require. And so just to touch on barriers to scale, this was a case study that they've conducted within the very significant and important mahi. Um, so this EUE authority would like to restore the oyster fishery. You can actually see that um, it was removed under the Oyster Fisheries Act. Um, so how, although legislated, there are multiple barriers, including lack of transparent processes and remedies at local and national levels. So the key point is, how are we to understand and navigate scales across EBM if there is no access for iwi and hapu to their rohe moana, to the legislative reserves designated for them and to honour te kanga Māori that supports sustainability. And I think that feeds very nicely into the previous um, presentation we've just heard around legal and policy frameworks. So we're hearing from our national Aotearoa-based work as well as internationally the importance of these legal and policy frameworks that would support relationships between people and place that are flexible, tailored and um, to context and that that would be recognised. We also heard from Dan, Lara and Desna yesterday about place-based, people-based, ethical, equitable um, management in terms of a multi-scalar approach. So we're seeing some um, themes that are coming through. And what we'll be looking at in this research is asking some specific questions around this question of scale, both temporally and spatially. So here we'll be looking at some of these legal and policy frameworks in terms of understanding those relational models, how they should be uh, scaled in space and time. If these strategy levers, hooks and anchors change with increasing time and space scales, so this is work that's being Liz, led by Liz and Eric. And what are some of the drivers of strategies with scale that are related to positive environmental outcomes or blue economy actions? Um, we also have a strand of researchers that are working alongside to look at the scales at which end users apply management tools. Um, so here we have um, some, some research around those formally are formally analysing those scale mismatches between management, environmental and social or ecological objectives. We're working to generate some scaling rules, um, looking at non-linearities and thresholds. This is where um, the super brain of Judy Hewitt is helping us greatly to think about these accumulation of effects across space and time. Um, and we're looking at applying these in a number of case studies. So we have, for example, we're exploring a case study where we're looking at jurisdictional boundaries that do not account for ecological uh, connectivity using agent-based models. We're considering the perils of averages from an ecological perspective and where we get misalignments between values um, and management. So the final piece of work um, ecological is around thinking about psychological barriers. So we know that um, nat the natural world uh, operates on timescales that are significantly longer than the timescales typical of our human decision making, and this creates a lot of difficulties for conservation. Um, so one of the things we're exploring is to better understand human behaviour as a means of resolving these mismatches. So here we're looking at assessing time frames or time scales that can result in positive outcomes. So we're working with uh, Tashiano, who's an environmental psychologist, around how what we call future thinking uh, might be useful in terms of trying to focus on these positive outcomes. Um, this particular study that you see up here it was just related to positive environmental behaviours of riding bicycles, but it looked at what they called the affordances or the things that needed to be in place for those positive environmental actions uh, to occur. 
So fi the final piece of work that we will conduct is we will take our research aim one and two when it's completed and look at um, developing some visual summaries. So to more clearly um, understand these scale dependencies and how to navigate scale for the benefit of, of ecosystems and people in decision making. Um, and we will be looking at uh, investigating some of these knowledge, how knowledge can impact policy and behaviour through these scenario-based framing and testing of our visual summaries with you. So thank you very much, Naimihi Nui, uh, and look forward to any questions during the break or at lunchtime. Thank you.